startup operating system Cyanogen is running full steam ahead. It's a modified version of Android that doesn't rely on Google services. You've got Qualcomm, Rupert Murdoch, and Twitter all recently invested in the company, and now Microsoft just announced a partnership with them. So joining us now to discuss the future of Cyanogen is Sasha Segan, lead mobile analyst at PCMag.com. Sasha, thanks for joining us today. Thanks for having me. So how big of a threat will Cyanogen be to Google and Apple? And do you see it being the number three operating system? Or is it even possible that it could squeeze into one of the two top spots? Well, it's at best number three. Uh, the issue right now is that Google and Apple, between them, outside of China, own 90-plus uh, percent of the mobile operating system market. And that creeps out a lot of the other players involved, the phone manufacturers, uh, the mobile carriers, the application providers. They don't like so much of their future uh, being in these two companies. So they've tried to nurture, for instance, Windows Phone, BlackBerry, Amazon Fire Phone, uh, Firefox OS. These have all been other contenders who have come in but haven't managed to break through uh, that Apple-Google duopoly. And, of course, this exposes problems to having an open source model as well. I mean, do you think Google has kept a blind eye to some other company coming in and posing a threat such as this? Well, I, I don't think this is as much of a threat to, to, to Google as you might think it is. I mean, the, the yeah. real uh, issue with the open source model here is that Cyanogen's needing to partner with Microsoft shows that open source has a lot of trouble creating uh, compelling consumer applications. Notice that Cyanogen didn't draw its applications from the open source community. It had to turn to Microsoft. Um, so you definitely see open source as a vital foundation for operating systems. But when you get to the level of consumer polish, it looks like they have to go to closed source alternatives. That's certainly a good point. And I know you just mentioned this isn't necessarily so much of a threat to Google. But given the fact that you know, we've got Google facing all these potential regulatory problems in Europe right now, I mean, does this make this partnership between Microsoft and Cyanogen uh, any more significant? Uh, yes. Well, I mean, Google actually right now could use a viable but not terribly threatening third competitor because Google needs to go to the European regulatory authorities and say that, look, there's a lot of competition in this space. You don't need to worry about us. You don't need to regulate us because it's a vital space. So if Cyanogen takes say, if Cyanogen takes a bit of the market, if it takes 10, 15 percent of the market, that really takes a lot of pressure off of Google in the regulatory space. So you get an idea where uh, Google may decide to lose a little to gain more. Hmm. Well, thank you for joining us, Sasha Segan. Great to see you. Thank you for watching. I'm Morgan Brennan. Have a great day. Hey YouTube fans, I'm Landon Dowdy from CNBC. Thank you so much for checking out our channel. You can subscribe by clicking right here to check out the latest Mad Money CEO interviews, market news, financial advice, and product unboxing. Enjoy! Mm -hmm.